So with my trip to Taipei for Computex coming up and the fact that I have no data redundancy for my system whatsoever, I decided that I needed a way to effectively back up my files and then also have access to them on my local network. The typical or rather simplest way of doing this is buying a NAS, network attached storage device, and slapping it onto your router. However, since I am not a man who is about simplicity, I decided that I needed to build my own NAS using the free NAS software with some spare hardware I had around my office. The only thing I did not have an extra of was a chassis, but Cooler Master South Africa was gracious enough to provide me with a Cooler Master Silencio 452 mid tower case for this project. So thank you very much, Cooler Master. Now let's delve into the journey of building my own network storage. The first step in this process was the most familiar and therefore the most comfortable. I had to assemble the FreeNAS system. The choice of my components was pretty simple. I only had one spare part of everything, so that's what went in. The processor is an AMD A107850K APU. Strange for a FreeNAS, but the quad-core processor will suffice. This went along with my ASUS A88 XME Micro ATX motherboard loaded with a 16GB kit of G-Skill Trident X 2400MHz RAM and a 650W power supply. Some of these parts are excessive, such as the fact that I'm using an APU instead of a CPU, and I have rather high-speed DDR3 RAM in the system, but again, I worked with what I had. I specifically requested that Cooler Master send me one of their Silencio series cases because of their noise dampening features, as well as the fact that it can support six three and a half inch drives officially, and then unofficially more if I use adapters in the dual five and a quarter inch drive bays. For my drives, I have two two terabyte Seagate 7200 RPM drives, which I wanted to run in a redundant configuration so that I would lose half of my storage capacity but then also have the peace of mind that if one of the drive fails, I still have one more with all of the data still on it. And because I'm not only storing all of the files that are associated with producing these YouTube videos, but also personal documents and family photos, I wanted to make sure the data is as safe as I can reasonably make it. So the next step in the process was to download the free NAS software from their website and install it onto a bootable 16 gigabyte USB drive since free NAS is lightweight enough to run off of only the USB drive. However, take note that installation requires two USB drives, one which contains the installation image and then another to receive the installation instructions and host the software itself. But after you install FreeNAS, you only need the drive that was installed on too. But getting back to the drive that hosts the installation media, you can download FreeNAS from the website in either an ISO or an IMG file. I went with ISO and attempted to use an ISO to USB application that unfortunately didn't work. It would get partial way through the install and then give me a ton of error messages. However, when I reattempted to write the ISO to the flash drive using the method FreeNAS suggested, which utilizes the Win32 Disk Imager application, then the installation went through flawlessly. After the installation, I set the FreeNAS to a static IP and then configured my root password to be able to log into the web UI and access the system remotely. Here's where I have to give props to the videos that were done by Paul's Hardware and Tech Syndicate regarding their FreeNAS builds. They were helpful in me trying to troubleshoot some of the issues that I ran into with installing the drives, although my issues actually weren't identical, but it still was very useful to watch those videos. The setup is supposed to be straightforward with the wizard, but I unfortunately ran into some issues as aforementioned. Whenever I tried to bring my drives into the FreeNAS volume manager, it kept telling me error unable to GPT format the disk ADA0. And whenever I would try to wipe the disk with the built-in utility, I would get another error message saying failed to wipe ADA0P2DD colon slash dev slash ADA0P2 operation not permitted. Bunch of stuff. Now in Paul's hardware's video, he mentions getting a command line fix to enter into the shell of FreeNAS. Unfortunately, when I attempted to use said fix, it still did not allow me to wipe the disks or create a volume. So at this point, I resorted to removing the drives from my FreeNAS server, hooking them up to a Windows machine, going into disk management on Windows and doing a GPT format there, and then reinstalling the drives back into the FreeNAS machine. At this point, I was finally able to create the volumes in FreeNAS. I set both of my two terabyte drives in a mirror configuration, allowing for the data redundancy that I mentioned earlier. After setting up the volume, I was then able to configure the data set or simplistically the file folder system. 
So now that the drives were configured, I could finally set the FreeNAS up for what I needed it to do, store my backup content, give me local access to the files, and make sure I don't dump any of the files accidentally. With the dataset configured, I had a place to store my backup content, but I needed a way to put my files onto the NAS. This is where the Windows CIFS sharing came into play. And while it should have been as simple as specifying the dataset that I wanted to use in the path menu, and then enabling guest access before setting up unique users, I unfortunately clicked the use as home share box, which prevented me from being able to access the dataset that I had created. It took me a bit to figure this out, but once I disabled the home share option, then the drives became accessible by going to the file explorer and clicking on the network. And then it was only a matter of dragging and dropping my files and then waiting hours because the LTE router that I have only has a 100 meg ethernet connection. It was a shame. Following this, it was only a matter of setting up one more level of redundancy with the snapshot feature, which essentially allows for backups to be saved at regular intervals for a specific duration of time to prevent against accidental deletion or the like. I set mine up to take a snapshot once a day and to keep them for two weeks. I'm typically only going to be using my FreeNAS for data dumping all of my finished projects, so there's not likely to be more frequent uploads than once per day. And that, that's pretty much it. I now have a local storage solution with a couple layers of data redundancy, but here are some finishing thoughts that I have from this project. The first thought is FreeNAS is simpler to set up than I initially thought. Sure, there's a lot of power user options that can get overwhelming when you first enter the system, but for the most part, just getting a day-to-day -day NAS up and running should be close to a quick and painless process if you have any sort of technical knowledge. The second idea that is that I'm going to need to add more storage sometime soon. I'm at less than 700 gigabytes left, and that's without uploading the 300 or so gigabytes that I've been reserving on my laptop in the projects to be archived to NAS folder. So it looks like two more drives are in my near future. And my third and final thought is that I definitely need to get a router capable of handling a gigabit connection. The basic Huawei LTE router I have with its 100 megabit per second interface definitely hard limited the transfer speeds and therefore the time it took to export my data onto the NAS. So a new networking solution also seems to need to happen to get the free NAS running as effectively as possible. Now the only thing left for me to do is to mount it in its permanent spot just above my desk over there and leave it be. And that's pretty much it for this video on my free NAS build. Thanks again to Cooler Master South Africa for sponsoring this video with the Silencio 452. Be sure to expect a review coming out on this chassis sometime soon. So like this video if you found it helpful at all, dislike it if you thought it was poo or that I should have just purchased a standalone NAS device. You can subscribe to stay up to date on all of my latest tech related content, including all of my Computex 2016 coverage. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Cheers.